Good evening. Welcome to the July 29, 2019 Selectman's meeting. Please join me for the Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Counselor. Good evening. <clears throat> so first we have, do we? Yeah, just the regular agenda. We get yeah, to the same thing. First, we have public comment. Anyone wishing to speak public comment, please join us at the podium. My name is uh, Bill Moberg, that's M-O-V-E-R-G, and I live at 200 Mill Road. I have a couple of issues that I'd like to call your attention to. Fortunately, one of them you have solved, and I'm here to thank you for that. <coughs> and that concerns the access to uh, Place Cove. You've done an excellent job down there. Uh, my wife and I have been in town for 19 and a half years, and we often like to go down there and walk that beach. In the last couple of years, we haven't been able to because the access has deteriorated to the point where it's just not safe. So I was pleased to see this year that they've replaced the steps with some nice granite steps, and I put a handrail in. Uh, and so we're in our 80s now, so uh, we really appreciate the ability to get back down onto the beach again. Uh, the other thing is that um, the enforcement down there has been excellent. I've never seen so many uh, police officers down there handing out stickers as I have this year. So thank you very much for a job well done. And I don't, that's the Board of Selectmen, uh, the town manager, DPW, who else, whoever else was involved in that project. So thank you. Thank you. The other issue I have is a safety issue with Mill Road. Um, Yesterday, <coughs> uh, select woman Barnes had the, in, the uh, bad experience of having a tree limb fall on her car as she was passing down Mill Road in front of my house. <coughs> Very large limb, and it's not the first one that's come down. In the 20 years or so that I've lived there, I've seen many limbs come down and trees come down. The trees, like many of us in town, are past their prime. They need to be taken down, some of them. They're infested with ants, and accidents are going to happen. Fortunately, she did not get hurt, and I guess the damage wasn't too bad with the cart. So there is a safety issue with, with uh, the trees coming down as they are. They're on town property. They're within the 20 the 50-mile uh, highway uh, boundaries, and about the trees on the other side of the stone wall in front of my place are probably less than four feet from the edge of the road. So if, uh, if and when sad sidewalks were ever put in, which won't happen in my lifetime, I'm sure, uh, they'd have to come down anyway. The other safety issue is coming out of my driveway, the trees block my view. I have to, come, the car has to come out onto the road almost before I can see clearly. My eyesight's not what it used to be, and so I'm, I'm afraid that someday there's going to be an accident. I also have to go to the other side of the street to my mailbox, and... Um, the traffic on Mill Road, it's a bypass. Everybody uses it to get away from the lights and the traffic on Route 1. And over the years, the traffic has grown and grown. There's a, it's a major commuter route for people coming from the beach back and forth to Portsmouth. You, during the commuter hours, I can't get across the street to my mailbox. And the, unfortunately, the mail is delivered right at the peak of, of that time. So. I, I think we need more enforcement. I very seldom I see any uh, cruisers down that way, and the, the you know it's it, you know 80 percent of the people are fine. People will stop and let me cross the street, but it's that 10 percent that don't get the message. Uh, you've added a lighted sign down there to tell people it's a 30 mile an hour zone, but that 10 percent pays no attention to it. Motorcycles, in particular, in particular the the foreign fast racing bikes. Some of them scream down there at full throttle with the engine screaming. They just, they, that stretch between Watson's Lane and, and, uh, uh, and Ann's Lane is just a straightaway that they just love to race down. So we would appreciate a little more presence down there uh, enforcing that. So, Thank you so much for coming in. We do have a time limit. I do. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for attention. We appreciate you. that you came out tonight. Others wishing to speak under community con 
comment. I don't know. Bill Murphy, 1M Street. I just want to call and make a quick comment on um, Saturday's fire in Dover Ave. I also own the convenience store on the corner there. I just want
I want to thank the Board of Selectmen, Town Manager, the Fire Chief, the Police Chief, the coordination with the traffic over the bridge in Ashworth Ave, bumper to bumper, and once the fire broke out, it was jam-packed. The coordination between the police department to get them roads open, get the fire trucks in, and what's more impressive was the mutual aid that came in and how the police department got those trucks to the fire. I really just want to congratulate you guys because it starts at the top. It's a job very well done. I know we get a lot of criticism. I saw it all firsthand for myself. I was very, very impressed. And it takes a lot of coordination and a lot of, uh, I don't know, training from the police chief, the fire chief. And I just want to say thank you. It made me really proud. The people uh, that are vacationing here at the beach, to see that firsthand, they think of a little town. It was unbelievable. It was really first class. I just want to thank you guys for a job really well done. Okay, that's all I got to say. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Any other public comment this evening? Uh, Dean Merrill, 20 High Street. Um, I'm also the president of Experience Hampton. First, I want to thank the board for supporting the uh, Christmas parade do donation the taxpayers passed. But uh, one of our biggest fundraisers in a couple of weeks, which is on August 12th, uh, we have a golf tournament. And if anybody's watching and they'd like to join and help support the parade, um, just give me a shout or um, go out on Experience Hampton website. So thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Please join us. Hi, everybody. Good I evening. met some of you before. I'm Christina Hanges, 837 Ocean Boulevard. Shirley Sylvester, 6 Meadow Pond Road. Kathy Asoyan, 174 Kings Highway. I know budgets are tight. We're just putting in a request just so that perhaps we can have a more um, defined pickleball court on one of the town tennis courts. It might, it might sound a little, super, I mean, just frivolous, but we play pickleball, and we'd like our town to support that as well. And, and a ten, there, is tennis, there is a tennis court um, at Tuckfield that offers some lineage, but it's not good. So if we could just find a couple of pennies in that budget to give the seniors of the Hamptons pickleball time, because we, we, we do the pickleball in the villages. There are a bunch of us that live in Hampton, and then we'd like to do it here as well. So if you can find kindness in your heart and pennies in your pocket, we would appreciate it. And that's it. Thank you. And thank you for your time, because this is a lot of work. And I know you put in a lot of work. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, uh, we're going to move to announcements and community calendar. I'd like to start tonight um, to bring, uh, you know, to uh, bring, mention the fact that Hampton has just been picked as the best beach town by uh, Yankee Magazine. And, um, you know, it, there was a nice story in the paper, and it's wonderful how hard everyone's worked to make it this way. And um, Chuck has done such a nice job, and um, Chuck Rage, the precinct commissioner, and all of the precinct commissioners have done well, and there's experience Hampton and all the different things that work. But I know we have um, some people here from the state tonight, and I'd like to just remind people that um, the money that comes to uh, the Hampton Village District comes from the taxpayers of the beach. It doesn't come from the taxpayers of Hampton. Um, it comes from the taxpayers south of Winniconnet Road, only on that side of the street to the ocean and all the way to the bridge. Uh, it's not the people up on Boar's Head. It's the heart of the beach. The business people contribute. People can ask to, um, you know, only to pay, what is it, the promotional part versus the uh, regular part. But it pays for things like the fireworks and the entertainment. And I know that Chuck thanked the taxpayers for buying into it, but I think it's important to remember that those are the, pe they're just not the business people that are paying. 
and the, uh, the regular people that live in Hampton really are looking forward and enjoying, much like those ladies just said, uh, <clears throat> being there. But it's the taxpayers that really work, you know, that pay for that, at least that part of it. And so I'd like to thank those taxpayers at the beach for contributing and making it and help make it number one beach. Mrs. Woolsey? What? Announcements and community? No, I have nothing. No. Gina? Um, yes, I have a couple. Uh, I attended the uh, NHMA proposed new PFAS drinking water standards on Monday, July 22nd. Uh, Mike Carl, the Hampton Chief Wastewater Treatment Plant Operator, was also in attendance. And it seems or appears that these more conservative regulations may affect municipal landfills and wastewater treatment plants inevitably in the near future, maybe even more so than water utilities. There was a whole session dedicated to this at the workshop. I have given copies to the town manager for distribution. Also, I was told by attendance of the state joint legislative committee on administrative rules that they did not accept comments from municipalities during the meeting, which I found interesting. Yep. Also, my second announcement is that the planning board had their second master plan meeting on July 17th. I attended, and it was a very good discussion with the RPC, and I definitely think that the public should watch it if they have time. It's the beginning of the meeting on what having an updated master plan can do for the town. All set for now. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> next, we have the approval of minutes July 15th, 2019. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Any, any comment? Uh, we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. One, one person not here tonight. Next, we have the consent agenda, a cemetery deed, um, a donation to my breast cancer, uh, a uh, one-day entertainment license, parade and public gathering license, Raffle permits, road closures, Peniman Lane, um, and veterans tax credit renewals. Mr. Chairman? Yeah? I'd like to ask that number four seafood festival, why is this on the consent agenda? We usually have an appointment for this. Do we not? Does that have um, on it? I don't believe that we've ha they've, they don't always come in. I don't believe they did last year. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Well, I have concerns about the B.C. Street situation mm -hmm. and uh, what happened last year with the trash because that business owner actually sold his business mm -hmm. because of uh, he couldn't he couldn't have access to it during the seafood festival. So I wanted to ask them if it was going to be the same way this year. Okay. Uh, what would you suggest for that, Fred? This, Mr. Chairman, is to allow them to do all of their activities uh, that they need licenses for. So without this, there won't be a seafood festival. Um, as far as we can invite them in to talk to the board about their arrangements to that festival, uh, and perhaps we should do that at the next meeting. Um, okay. So you would want to uh, drop out part of that or just hold the whole thing until the next meeting. It's two weeks. Uh, we can certainly hold the whole thing if the board wants to. Yeah, but um, it usually... The, the, why don't we just hold that one part out? Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. Um, is it we, there's someone out in the audience uh, that has to do with the seafood festival. Will that work out to hold back that one part? For two weeks? Yeah. Uh, can is it possible to talk about it this evening? Why don't you vote the rest of it and then talk about that? Okay, so we'll hold that and uh, we'll talk about that after. Okay, um, so we have she. Did you move it, Mary Louise? Um, Minus the no, seafood festival. I don't think anybody moved it. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to move it, Rusty? Or? I'll move it. Second. I'll second without being left out. Okay. All those in favor? Four and one not here tonight. Um, so we have appointments. 
and um, I just want to read uh, about this is the intent of this meeting is to discuss the improvements to approximately 100 curb ramp tip downs along New Hampshire 1A Ocean Boulevard in Hampton. The project limits extend 3.4 miles along the northbound side of Ocean Boulevard from Epping Avenue to Cusack Road and 2.4 miles along the southbound side from Cusack Road to Nutt Avenue for a total of 5.8 miles. Um, gentlemen, you want to join us at the table? We have a lot of people and uh, state reps here tonight too. The Hampton Area Commission is represented and uh, Rennie Cushing and Pat Bushway mm -hmm. and Tom Laughlin mm -hmm. and Thank you, Mr. Gedger. Chairman. Let me see if I can't get this. So we have quite a few people here tonight showing interest here. Then we did change our agenda around tonight. There was um, MRI was scheduled, and they've changed because we gave uh, preference here to DOT. And that I do appreciate. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, representatives, uh, and, and uh, the public. Um, my name is Ron Grand Mason, and I am the project manager for uh, the subject project. I was also the project manager for the paving of 1A down on Ocean Boulevard this, this past uh, spring um, before Memorial Day. Um, that is just to band-aid things together until the 10-year plan project comes along um, but it was the pavement was deteriorating way too quickly for us uh, we felt something had to be done uh, in advance of of any of the, the major improvements that were going to be coming through here so um, I just wanted to come here and give a brief overview of exactly what we were planning on doing uh, out on Ocean Boulevard in the areas that you described um, Really, we were intent to try and evaluate um, the curb ramps, uh, any of the, the facilities that actually brought um, pedestrian traffic across our roadway and up onto the pedestrian facilities that they have on the sidewalks. Um, so the intent was to make those improvements to uh, meet the ADA requirements of the DOT and the DOJ ruling of 2013 and PROAG. Um, in this particular case, the intent was to pro provide improved pedestrian con connectivity from our roadway surface up onto those pedestrian facilities. Um, and that's one of those things that's mandated as part of that 2013 um, ruling. There are no improvements, um, no proposed improvements to the existing pedestrian facilities, except for the curb ramps. Um, and the proposed project improvements are required to meet that ruling. So I also uh, wanted to give you a brief overview of where the locations are. We have roughly 125 um, areas where we're going to be doing these ramps. And it can be shown. Uh, in this area, so uh, all the way up uh, in this this top corner, uh, that's Epping Avenue, um, where Ashworth is as you head down uh, towards Seabrook. Um, it heads uh, northbound along 1A, all along the, the ocean frontage. Uh, we have coordinated also with Dancer because Dancer owns uh, the park side, um, and they have some facilities that will be improving as part of this project as well, mainly because what they have out there currently met previous standards, but it doesn't meet the <coughs> standards as far as accessibility is concerned. Mainly the uh, material that the truncated domes, um, the, the panels that the detectable warnings that visually impaired um, can see or, or can feel as they um, go into the pedestrian ways uh, and make those crossings across 1A. Uh, we'll be making improvements to that to improve those materials that we're using because when the snow plows come along, they actually plow off uh, little 
little bits and pieces so pretty soon you won't have any of those those tactile differences um, and also the contrast right now it's gray visually impaired um, people will not be able to see the difference between the concrete and those um, those domes um, to know where to safely cross so what we are doing is we're putting in cast iron uh, you'll be able to see them they won't be um, torn off with the plows as, as well um, and uh, it'll be a, a, a much better facility for the visually impaired in the uh, you look like you have a question no way dark uh, okay. questions till the end. Um, so it's roughly 123 the focus the main focus um, prior to Memorial Day of next year uh, is to do the Ocean Boulevard section uh, and get that done before Memorial Day um, just like we did with the paving this past year um, the other um, areas that are Boar's Head North to Cusack and back we're going to try and there, there might be a possibility and actually I can talk to the town to find out if there are better times than others that we could go out and do some of those other areas where I'm fearful that there's 125 ish of these that have to be taken care of and getting them all done before Memorial Day might not be possible. So that's one of those discussions that I'll be having with the town. Um, so the intent of, of this project is just to bring these up to uh, acceptable, um, I, I guess you, an acceptable condition in order to pass those pedestrians on to the pedestrian facilities. Uh, and that's again in advance of the 10-year plan project. I'd love to say that we can use a 10-year plan project Just put all the money in there and do it then but that's uh, a couple of years down the road and Per the DOJ we're supposed to do it either consecutively or in concurrence with a a paving maintenance project um, And that's why we're focusing on Ocean Boulevard because we've already paved it um, The 10-year plan project as I'm sure you are all aware, um, is is on the books in the 10-year plan, uh, 40797, set to advertise in October of 2023 for construction in 2024. There is money for engineering. It is currently uh, being engineered. I'm not sure where it is. That's a different project manager. And from based on the conversation with some of the representatives, it sounds like they'll be contacting that project manager to get additional information. I also do want to acknowledge that there is a uh, Hampton Beach area master plan that was developed by the VHB uh, and the DOT um, and the priorities seem to be in that uh, Ocean Boulevard area from Ashworth uh, south to the Ashworth north uh, and that beach proper area. Um, and to the tune of about $6.1 million is the estimate. Um, we think that, that might be a little light. Um, but again, the project manager will be the one that's, that's dealing with those issues on that project. Um, I would like to show a couple of the sample areas that we'll be targeting. I want you to see exactly uh, what we're going to be looking at. Um, I did provide. Uh, drawings these drawings to the board yeah. in advance um, it's simple uh, little spot areas that we're going to be uh, targeting for safer pedestrian uh, crossing from the existing pedestrian facilities across the the state's roadway uh, and then back up onto the opposing side of the roadway we'll be doing that as I said to about 123 um, different locations all along the beach some areas are as, as simple as a concrete pad with the detectable warnings some are a little bit more elaborate um, to show multiple locations and multiple uh, directions of travel of the pedestrians um, and there will be restriping of crosswalks as well in several of those areas As part of any public meeting that we have, uh, we do go through the environmental process. And I did want, um, I told the environmental people that they didn't have to come. Um, but I do have a public uh, notice that I need to read.
Um, so if you bear with me just for a second. So the public statement is, as part of the National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, and other state and federal regulations, the New Hampshire DOT must investigate the potential impacts that our projects will have on the surrounding natural, cultural, and social environment. Identifying key resources early in the project development process enables the department to avoid or minimize impacts as design proceeds. Part of our review involves historic resources. In accordance with Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, the department is reviewing the project to determine if there are historic resources within the area that would be impacted by the construction of this project. Historic properties can include buildings and structures 50 years or older, as well as archaeological sites. In addition to age, it must also be determined if a structure is eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. To date, the department has identified a known historic district at the southern end of the project and the Hampton Beach area. Project impacts will remain within the state right-of-way and existing sidewalk limits, so no new construction areas have been identified. As such, historic properties are not anticipate, anticipated to be impacted by the project. However, we are asking that if anyone has concerns about historical or archaeological resources in or adjacent to the project area, they bring them to our attention today or contact me after the meeting. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act offers those that possess a direct interest in historical resources, including town officials and historical societies, an opportunity to become more involved in an advisory role during project development as consulting parties. Those interested would need to also indicate to the Federal Highway Administration in writing. Please see me after the meeting if you'd like more information. Um, so that being said, I am not asking for anything other than information, if you, if you feel like sharing it, uh, regarding any of these proposed improvements. Um, however, we will be asking that a municipal work zone agreement be uh, entered into, and I think I sent that out previously. Um, all it is is just allows the department to control traffic in and around during the construction of the project. Um, I think that's all. If you would like me to go through any of these other areas specifically, I'd be more than willing to do that. Uh, I do plan on taking what I have here today and putting it on our website so that people can look at it at their leisure, at home, having coffee in the morning, uh, and then they can contact me if they have any questions. Does the board have any questions? Um, why don't we um, let um, uh, Mr. Gerald speak first, I think, and ask a couple of questions. Okay. I'm the town attorney. My name is Mark Gerald. Welcome. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. Likewise. Sir, Mark has the... He does. Yeah. Thank you, Mary Louise. That's better. Okay. Um, the land on which the curb ramps are being installed belongs to the state of New Hampshire, isn't that correct? I think parts of it do, yes. Are there, what parts don't? I, I am not exactly sure ownership, um, but I do know that, that the beach side, I believe that that's the jurisdiction of, of Dancer, uh, which is the state. Um, I'm not exactly sure who owns the, the, the sidewalks in this area. Um, most of it is within the roadway section, so we, you know, we are providing access to those pedestrian facilities. But you're not looking for the selectman's permission as if this was town property, are you? I am not. Okay. Uh, you talked about the municipal work zone agreement. You are probably aware of a rather large verdict that occurred with respect to uh, the seawall property on the North Beach as a result of a certain traffic control or pedestrian control. Um, you're not asking that the municipal work zone agreement put any responsibility on the town for deciding what safety measures to take, are you? I am not, sir. Whose responsibility would that be? As far as the traffic control and the yes. work zone, it would be the department and the, the contractor in place. Yeah, but do you, you obviously have you you've not put this out to bid yet. We have not. No, we're in the design phase right now. Okay. Did you want to start, Rusty? Sure. 
Um, I noticed a, a, at least a couple that were missing. There's one at the end of Winnicunit Road in the uh, Dread or Dancer uh, fix that last last year or two years ago, and I want to make sure that one is at the complete. end of Winnicunit Road. Yep, right at the, right uh, right by the opening there. <coughs> And the, the other one is at the bottom of Dumas Ave, where it cuts across over to Ocean Boulevard. It comes from Ocean Boulevard, goes across the end of Dumas Ave, and up to the boulevard there. We have a number of people that have shown concerns because that, that crosswalk has never really been properly put in. And uh, so... So there is no crosswalk I there today? I believe so, but there is sidewalk at both sides. So mm -hmm. uh, it is ramped on the northern side i don't know about the the southern edge it's been you're talking about at dumas Island? yes yeah. yeah it's been uh quite it, this is something that's been people that live around there for years have lobbied for plus there's another there's a 30 unit condo going there too so there's going to be 30 people right there i mean 30 houses, homes that have more than one person so that are going to be looking to cross the street. Yeah, so if you just take a look at that. I'll have to check in with our Bureau of Traffic. Who does um, it, yeah. And the other thing is, uh, with, with putting in the new side, uh, new crosswalks, are they going to do anything with signage? There are, There is no intention for this project to have any um, Any additional any signage? signage? No. No, no uh, for the, uh, the flashers or the... No, based on the evaluations that our Bureau of Traffic have done, um, there is no uh, requirement, I guess, for the rapid flashing beacons. I'm, okay. I'm assuming that's what you're yep. referring to. Yep. Um, the town would have received um, some documentation um, requesting that if, if a particular crosswalk is to be retained, that certain aspects have to be accounted for. And from, what, from my knowledge, there hasn't been any uh, discussion of any additional signage or you know, uh, flashing beacons that were necessary. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? Well, I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but the maps are not not very useful to me at the moment. Are you doing this work on both sides of 1A? Yes. We are, yes. Okay, so because so, the, a, the a, state owns 1A all the way to the west. Correct. Okay, you're talking about domes? It makes me think of something in the Middle East. And what, what are domes? Sorry, truncated domes or detectable warning panels are, um, if, you're, if you're going to use a crosswalk, uh, it's typically that, that, uh, that bumpy surface that just before you go onto the roadway surface, it can be metal, it can be plastic, uh, it can be very thick uh, paint. Um, I'm not sure what other materials um, but essentially, it's just uh, a bunch of um, strategically placed um, domes, little itty bitty domes that are, you know, about the size of a, a half dollar or maybe a silver dollar, um, and they're they're just enough to allow uh, a visually impaired person to realize that hey, they've reached uh, an unsafe position, uh, and they are going to be going out into the public. So it's nothing they trip over. No. It's just a rough uh, surface. It's a rougher surface, yes. It's, okay. it's to provide that. Um, when you're doing the sidewalks, and I, I don't exactly know what a curb ramp is, you mean that we're going along the sidewalk, and then you've got to get down to cross the street, and then you're going to go up on the other side? So it's going to be... Um, it's not going to be a sidewalk just going here across the street and flat in the other way. You're going to... You're going to uh, there are uh, slopes slope. from the existing okay. pedestrian facility slope. down to a flat spot, so that the so if somebody were in a wheelchair, they'd be able to. Act, uh, how are the, how turn. how significant are the slopes? I mean, is it? Some of them, it all depends on the roadway um, and and whatever. The nice thing about Hampton is it's flat, <laughs> um, so that a lot of a lot of the slope is taken out. Okay. Um, <laughs> So a lot of them will could be just a, a concrete pad with those um, truncated domes uh, inside that so that people know that they're going into traffic. We had an accident occur many years ago, I believe in the 70s, where a, a young lady, a resident of Hampton, uh, was out jogging uh, in, around 9 o'clock at night. It was in the winter, and she was hit by a car and killed. 
her family was very upset and they worked for a couple of years and put an article in the warrant to uh, put a sidewalk on High Street from the uh, 1A all the way up to what we call Five Corners in Hampton. And the money was raised and the sidewalk was built. But it goes like that and the runners still run in the street. So because I'm so wondering uneven. if this if this type of sidewalk construction might be something that people would find annoying or uh, I see what you're saying. You don't want to go through all this stuff if people are still going to be running down the street. Right. In a in a lot of instances, I see um, one of your one of the shoulders along one A is pretty much a pedestrian way uh, today. Mm -hmm. um, I envision that remaining. Uh, people are going to do that. Um, in those instances where they need to be up on, on the sidewalk, they will have the opportunity to go from the roadway up onto that sidewalk okay. with these curb ramps. They are gradual. It allows for a, um, okay. a person in a wheelchair to do it by hand, uh, not necessarily a motorized. Sorry. So there are certain slopes that it has to have in order to allow for that gradual transition. Okay. And one more quick question. A big problem on 1A and the chairman can testify to this, is drainage. And the drainage is old, and it needs to be replaced. Is that going to interfere with any of this when 1A has to be dug up to put in, I hope, proper drainage? These areas... Um, Maybe you could convince somebody to do the drainage while you're doing these. We're, we're, we're having those conversations. Um, the, there is no drainage that is going to be included as part of this project. Right. As I said before, you're digging up the road. This this is really just um, digging up around the the edges of the road in order to provide that pedestrian access up onto the pedestrian. But to put the drainage pipes in the road, you're going to have to dig up next to the sidewalk. Correct. In they'll some have, areas, they'll have to dig up the the hot as, top. As as as. As terrible as this sounds, uh -oh. um, this this almost sounds like a, a, a throwaway project because you do have a 10-year plan project that is coming up um, that will do a lot of this, redo a lot of this work. Okay. The problem is um, we could very well jeopardize the state's uh, federal allotment uh. of uh, almost $160 million if we don't uh, abide by this ruling. Uh -oh. um, so if we knowingly come through and do some improvements that the DOT and uh, the US DOT and the DOJ have told mm -hmm. us that we now have to okay. provide this connectivity, then we could very well lose that uh, that federal law and, and and the risk is too great for the state of New Hampshire to, to let one, that happen. One more quick question. Uh, the state has been very negligent in delineating crosswalks. Every spring there should be paint to show the crosswalks down on 1A, and uh, nobody's been very eager to get it done. Is this going to result in any uh, <laughs> identification of crosswalk, or will that be up to the state to get its paint cans out? And this uh, this particular project will uh, reorient some of the the um, the crossings. Okay. Um, as we did our paving, we did do um, a significant portion of those um, those stripings, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and we we put down what we call thermal.
plastic. It's a lot thicker. It's a lot sturdier oh. uh, to the plows and, and that sort oh. of thing. Um, so hopefully it'll last several paint years. Paint wears out every year. Paint wears out. Um, and these types of... Crossings, um, stop bars, we tend to use a, a thicker, um, more durable um, marking so that it stays uh, more than just that one year, um, hopefully. And, and it is our responsibility to take care of those. From what I understand, I, I need to tech, check with our Bureau of Traffic to find out if we're the ones that are responsible for maintaining uh, and refreshing these every year. Well, I appreciate you coming in, and it was pretty horrifying to look at. <laughs> So, but I'm not as, and, and I apologize. I'm not as afraid of it now. I okay. wanted to make sure that you had it in, ad in an advance so that you could maybe take a look at it and then you knew what I was talking about when I started. I appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Gina? Yes. Thank you for coming in and also thank you for the job you did on the paving. That was, uh, that went real mm -hmm. smooth and you Very did welcome. it. Very great. Very great job. Um, on the sidewalks, I have a question. So, on the west side, I know you're saying that you're going to make it so that wheelchairs can easily get up, right? If if there's if there's a if there's an area where we can actually build a curb ramp, uh, if there is a known crossing, um, we plan on providing those uh, based on based on the evaluations that we have in these in these detailed drawings. Right? Because I would say probably at least seventy five percent of the west side from the bridge all the way down to uh, probably where Ashworth, the Ashworth intersection is, yep. is pretty much non-existent. Mm. I mean, it's a lip. I mean, I, I, a wheelchair could easily get up that. So I'm not sure what you have to do to become compliant as far as how many of those you need to fix, but that's just, I like how you just described it as why people might think of it as a throwaway project and then you explain mm. why you have to do it, and I totally understand that, and I'm supportive of it, but it's the reasons why did it get this bad to begin <laughs> with, you know? And then now, even down on the east side, yeah. which I am a, have my bicycle on that shoulder almost every day.
uh, weather permitting, it's the same way. I can literally go up and down in some spots from the road to the sidewalk. So I'm glad you're going to be addressing it at least to uh, some extent. And again, I appreciate the way you uh, handle the paving. But my other concern is, uh, which everyone's talked about, Mary Louise and Rusty, uh, the, some of the crosswalks. I'm not sure what study happened for uh, the intersection of 1A and 1 Aconet, but I got to tell you as a resident of over 40 years and in the, living in that neighborhood, people almost get killed there on a regular basis. At that so intersection. I think the, the flashing light, would that would be definitely a key spot. And then also the past few weeks, I know I saw Boston Ave crosswalk. Is that one of the ones that you're going to be? I thought I saw it in one of the... It, it's quite possible. Um, I'm, I'm not as intimately familiar with the all the side road. roads. It is. <laughs> it's yeah, the, so it's down near a uh, Haverhill and, and Epping and, yeah, and down at the very a, beginning. Yeah, Atlantic, Boston, Concord, yeah. That is, uh, people I guess have almost gotten smoked there a couple times over the past week, I'm told, by yeah. business owners down there. So I'm not sure what the look of the new crosswalk is going to be, but hopefully it's something that could stand out a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I know this is yeah. sort of just a temporary fix, but. I got gotcha. you. Um, and that's an existing crosswalk today? Yes. In, in that location? And it, I think what it is is once people get over the bridge, mm -hmm. you know, and they have, they just gun it. Right. I mean, it's mostly due to speed, and it's the same thing down. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rick knows once they make it around that bend, they're out of the traffic and they gun it. Yeah. So that's why I think one of it is the same reasoning, so. Okay. I will bring that forward to our Bureau of Traffic as well. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, because um, some of the sidewalks are really bad, um, so if you fix the uh, curbs to get up on them, the peep, it just, <coughs> the people in the wheelchairs or the baby carriages to get, go into like sidewalk potholes because um, they're severe in many areas. So is there, will there be any consideration for that? As part of this project, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just to get pedestrians from our roadway up onto the pedestrian facilities. Unfortunately, not to do any of the pedestrian facilities themselves. Yeah. No, it, um, and I walk along there myself, plus my office is right there, so I'm looking out the window all day. You did such a good job um, paving the road that nobody uses the sidewalk, even at Boris Head. They walk in the traffic lane, because it's and nice I see and people out there with bare feet. I'm thinking, yeah. well, but yeah. they it must be comfortable on the road with bare feet. <laughs> but um, Un unfortunately, as part of this project, yeah. this this is is part of our uh, ADA transition funding that we get from uh, the the feds. Um, and it's specifically to try and deal with those transitions from the roadway surface up onto existing pedestrian facilities and not necessarily to do uh, yeah. complete sidewalk projects. Yeah, and there, and there are some places where the um, issues are like roses growing out over the sidewalk on, from state land, um, but there's also encroachment from many condominiums uh. and I think that's something the town needs to look at mm -hmm. as I've been watching it and uh, the, the they mean in many places they take up more than a third of the sidewalk yeah, they can so there's something we'll, we'll need to be watching that um, one thing that we've had some interest here is w people wanting to have beach access which is also where wheelchair accessible and I assume that this isn't including anything like that unfortunately it's not it's it's mainly from the roadway up onto the existing facilities not necessarily down to the beach no. level itself yeah because yeah. that's something that there's a lot of people looking um it's like that gentleman that was here today and he was saying you know there's, there's a lot of old timers in hampton it's the, one of the <laughs> oldest towns in new hampshire and um we'd like and it is like those ladies referred to it's a wonderful place to have good times for older people, and I think that's where Hampton's future is, in my opinion. So the more that you can do, the better we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and Mr. Gerald has some more comments. Yes, uh, Mr. Grand Mason, you've gotten some 44 figures here yes. in the packet. <laughs> can I have you just look with me at figure 20? Figure 20. 
Sorry if I make you... Uh, Figure 20. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yes. Um, I would say m almost all except this one of your figures have uh, linkages between the tip downs, if you want to call them that, with the tactile for uh, blind persons. Yes. That sort of, if you drew the straight line uh, from one tip down on one side of the road to the other side of the road, that would lead the blind person to walk straight and hopefully, and it happens to coincide with a crosswalk. Ah. Uh, in this figure 20, however, there's an exception where uh, there, there is an offset both on the northbound side of Route 1A and on the southbound side so that I say the, in the triangle area, a blind person is, is led to begin their crossing at the uh, tactile tip down, but would not be crossing in a crosswalk. In the correct direction. Right. Correct. Is it, what, what steps would be taken as part of this project to align the crosswalks so that uh, they would, there would not be a misdirection? You happen to pick the, the one that seems to be the, uh, the most difficult one that we're, that we're dealing with. This is, a, uh, this is one of our preliminary uh, plans. Um, and this was, uh, was something that, that Sant is, is with me from our Office of Federal Compliance. And, and we're working sort of a, as a partnership to, to try and make sure that this meets the DOT and the DOJ uh, ruling. So in this particular location, our um, what we were hoping for in this particular location, you can see the shadow. There's actually a utility pole, um, and it actually has what they call a pedestrian guy as well. So mm. where the crosswalk goes right now, um, it, it really goes into the utility pole. Um, so what we'd like to do is actually shift it so that it's really at that nose, that rounded nose, um, directly over to there, and then uh, more of a... Uh, it's, it's closer to a straight line um, to that corner and then across uh, Ashworth or 1A southbound. Um, and not necessarily as it's graphically depicted here. Um, this is one of our options that we can do. Um, I don't think any pedestrians are gonna do this because um, why, would they, why would they make this circuitous route uh, just to get across? Um, so we're trying to make it so <coughs> this is where it's it's more palatable for them to go, uh, makes more sense for them to go. Um, you always want to go in a straight line, so um, having them go up here, go around the corner, and then across doesn't make much sense. So we're working on that design, and hopefully there'll be one area where there'll be two um, detectable warning you know systems that accept them from the beach side, uh, and then put them so that they can effectively cross and, and more of a di direct route. So I, I applaud you for finding that one location. <laughs> <laughs> that was a test, no? Yes, I know. <laughs> so you're, uh, if, if This is going to be redesigned, yes. Yes, so if necessary, as part of the project, though, if, if the crosswalk does need to be re realigned as suggested, that would be part of the project. That's correct. In this particular case, uh, this one, and then I think there were a couple.
couple ones that were down, uh, you know, closer to the beginning of the project down at Epping and Boston and Haverhill, um, that if you've been out there, they're actually paint. They're not the thick thermoplastic, you know, um, so, so we can actually go out there and take those up a lot easier than we could take up that, that more uh, permanent uh, crossing. So, Rick. all right. Thank you. No, no. Uh, Some questions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the dog's fine. <laughs> I like dogs. Um, Fred, uh, Mr. <clears throat> Welch has some questions. Uh, Mr. Graham Mason, I've, I've studied your plans and understand what you're, what you're going to do here. Uh, you're obviously going to put tip downs across all of the streets running down the length of Ocean Boulevard on both sides. But I've noticed that you haven't con connected them or you're not indicating your <coughs> with crosswalks. Uh, when these people walk off of these sidewalks, the crosswalk is what's supposed to protect them and it's yeah. supposed to act as a stop line. You're not installing those, and this is all in state property. From the from the side roads, you mean? The yes. crosswalks yep. across the side right. roads? Um, those side roads are actually the portions that cross or come up to uh, Ocean Boulevard uh, are actually state highways. Uh, yeah. They're in the state highway layout. I also noticed that... Uh, when you get down to the uh, the state beach facilities, yeah. you also have tip downs of those various roadways going in. There's no crosswalks there either. I will have to check in with our Bureau of Traffic, who does all of our crosswalks uh, and and those. Um, well, and, my concern and, is, and I will I will respond. Concern is they're in the layout of the state highway. Yeah. Which which yeah. was a, which is a current concern. The other concern is that we understand from a letter received today that there is a crosswalk in front of the um, between D and F streets right in front of the casino mm -hmm. and that crosswalk is going to be abandoned I understand between D and F no I have a letter right here it says they're going to be abandoned and you're going to be required to either go to D or F street in order to get across the highway oh no. this came from Bill, Bill uh, Lambert is that the is that the half one that it only goes across southbound or well, it's one at the casino. It's, it's one that goes from Ocean the Boulevard. Shell. It's only northbound, so it goes from the seashell over to the center of the casino. Right. East Street. East Street. Yeah. East Street, exactly. It's around the middle of the casino. Right. According to this letter that we received today from uh, for Bill Lambert, the uh, traffic division engineer, um, that crosswalk is going to be eliminated, and people will be required to go to D or F streets to get across. They can no longer cross in front of the casino. Yeah. Oh, so this 51 and 51 and 52. So figure 15. That's right. Yep. Well, we have a design for it. Um, I will have to check in okay. with Mr. Lambert. I, I can only tell you what I what I got from Mr. Lambert today. So. Okay. Thank you. Good thing you came. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Today I was in um, Dover. And um, it's because of the way they have that Central Avenue and the, the roads are very wide because it's, oh, yeah. it's amazing. I can see how you have problems in probably many towns because uh, I was trying to cross the street and the only way I could get to where I wanted to go was to walk back almost six streets. But wow. with so much traffic, I did it. Plus, I was thinking, well, you're coming here tonight. I don't want to be jaywalking. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you know, it, it was amazing, and you can see how it affects all the businesses, and uh, that's as particularly that one there right in right. front of the casino. There's a lot of people in there that need to get across the street. So uh, do we have any other comments here at the table, or do you gentlemen have any more comments before we open it to the public? Uh, I don't have any more comments. Did, did, would you like to say something, Ms. I think you did a fine job. I don't have anything to add. Yeah. It's a good thing they came in, Mr. Chairman, because this is really enlightening. Yeah, it's very oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so next we have public comment. Would anyone like to speak from the public? Uh, we have Senator Stiles. I'm Nancy Stiles, uh, One Hayden Circle. <laughs> I was going to give Fred's address. <laughs> I have a question for you. Uh, for several years, I've been questioned about there's a, an area down in the area of the end of Winnicott Road where there are actual steps that go to get up to the uh, sidewalk. Now, I know you said you're not going to do any construction. I didn't know if you were going to do any deconstruction. 
to uh, get rid of those because I don't see how you can possibly accommodate um, right. walking disabled. If there's okay. if there's no crosswalk to that location, then we weren't planning on doing any construction or de de destruction in that area. So, even though it is an access it to, to a sidewalk, yeah. it's a it's stairs. It, to the sidewalk, right? Right. Um, so they're smaller if, than they should be, so that's why they're kind of dangerous. Yeah, they're dangerous. They were put in uh, when they redid the seawall. They're like a half a uh, stair. Across from about 581 Ocean Boulevard. Hmm. And uh, they used it there. For a while, there was a crosswalk painted there. Yeah. They took the crosswalk out. I know they took the crosswalk out because of the stairs, right. but I just didn't know if you were going to deal with that in any way. I wasn't as part of this project, no. Uh, but I will take it back and I will take a look at that and see if that's maybe one of those things that we put into what we call the transition plan um, that are much more significant um, uh, design efforts and or construction efforts. Because um, just by the way you're talking about it, it's, it sounds like it's a very challenging uh, area in order to try and accommodate any kind of an access up onto the pedestrian. About three feet different from the roadway to the yeah. sidewalk. I've seen people fall there yeah. more than yeah, once. So yeah. Maybe in the reconstruction they'll take care of it. Is that right? You can okay. always ask it. Just ask. <laughs> any other uh, people would like to speak from the public? Um, now, if you were could somehow put a pickleball uh, the way they could probably be able to speak. <laughs> Um, but I guess that can't happen. I know I would make some some friends. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, would you what like I will do is I will reach out to you uh, with the address of, of um, our website uh, for that page for uh, any of this, as well as the progress as we go through uh, and complete the design. You will be uh, involved with with my asking questions of, of Mr. Welch and, and trying to get things ironed out, uh, especially with crosswalks, et cetera. Um, and then as we progress, and even as we get into construction, I think based on what I've seen so far, um, there, it, this seems to be a community that likes to know what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I did have a conversation with the planner from, from Dancer, um, and she said people are out there, you know, like clockwork in the morning or the afternoon or whatever, and they want to know when their parking spot's going to be opened up and and what's going on. So I think it's in our best interest to try and put that information out um, so that you know we can keep you updated as far as what's going on and, and how we're progressing. Yeah. Well, we thank you for coming tonight, and um, I think it's the beginning of a new exciting time. At least things are starting to happen. I think part of the reason why things had particularly gotten into it terrible rut would possibly have been the recession and now things are changing and everything's loosening up a little bit so we hope it loosens up more for Hampton so. yeah. and uh, and all the people here because there's it's a very active community it's uh, you know we have 17,000 people but
but we have an extra 100,000, you know. In the summer months, exactly. So we appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to speaking with you more. You Thank left you. me less confused than I was in the beginning. <laughs> Thank you very much. Maybe yeah. I ought to give them a chance for everybody to leave there. Yeah. So, uh, every, uh, anyone who wants to leave before we go back to staff. Yeah, anyone wants to leave now before we go back to our work, please do. Thank you. <laughs> we'll just take a minute or two. Yes. All right, nice to meet you. Nice to talk to you. Absolutely. Fred, is it okay if we're, this unexpected thing came up with um, uh, that involves um, John Nyan that we can Just, bring it up before we should the bring town it down. managers? We should do it right now. Okay, join us up here, John. Uh, please. Yeah, that's good. <coughs> is John doing sidewalks? No, no. He's he, uh, Regina. Why don't you uh, feel free to ask what you want to ask? <coughs> Yes, last year we had a Hampton business owner who I believe told you at first um, they were concerned because of where Sabo the subs. yeah Sabo subs on C Street where the it was all going to be set up and I know that you guys went down there and I actually went down there I think right after you guys had been down to visit the business owner and it seemed like everything was working out but about two months ago. I talked to the new owners of the business who explained to me why the previous owner sold and it was because of what happened to him and his business during the seafood festival weekend. So I was under the impression that we were going to have an appointment with you like we always do so that mm -hmm. I could ask, but then I saw it on the consent agenda tonight. So. I so, wanted to make sure that that's not going to happen to the current business owners of Sabo Subs because okay. they plan on being open last time I checked. Yeah. Right. So, so may I, uh, Mr. Chairman, clarify a couple of things? And, and I would ask uh, the Board of Selectmen to separate out this application that we have in front of you tonight um, to the operational component. Uh, and let me, let me clarify. First of all, the public gathering uh, permit application is one that we have to submit in as many permits uh, for the state to approve the seafood festival. Uh, this permit that has been signed off by police, fire, and public works, town of Hampton, is a, a permit that I have to submit in uh, to the state special permit for state parks for, to, for us to be allowed to have the seafood festival. This year, we also had to submit in seven new building permits uh, by the uh, state fire marshal. Uh, it is now a new uh, uh, RSA in the state of New Hampshire that all the tents that we have have to receive individual building permits. Mm -hmm. And so we have had to go through that whole process. 
Um, in July of every year, we do all of these uh, permit processing applications, if you will, because I can't move forward with getting a liquor license uh, until the state parks permit has been approved. State parks permit will not approve unless I have all of the other permits associated to the permit, one of which is the um, town of Hampton public gathering permit. Hmm. So we have done, historically, we have done that permitting request uh, in the month of July. Um, and that's, as I said, I had met with all three department heads that are associated with the town and the seafood festival, fire, police, and public works, which have signed off on the, uh, the gathering permit. Now, in August, it has been historic, and we plan to continue that, is to come in front of the board uh, after we meet with all of the department heads to discuss all of the logistics the operational logistics of the seafood festival. And as you can imagine, a half a million dollar operation for one weekend, there is an awful lot of things that we have to connect with. So we sit down with all of the department heads and we work out a logistical plan on the role and responsibilities of the, the chamber, uh, all of our operational vendors, um, and the, all of the town offices. So our plan was to have that discussion, the operational discussion, in, in August. To further clarify what happened last year, when we were at this meeting uh, in front of the board in August of last year, um, Selectman Barnes did request us to go back and see if we could find an a alternative uh, to where the trash collectors uh, would be on C Street. Um, shortly after that request, I met with uh, Chief Sawyer um, and noting that there were eight other businesses on C Street, uh, we wanted to take a look at how could we rearrange, reconfigure some of our operational uh, vehicles um, on C Street. Uh, we did that by looking at the trash, which has two trash trucks. Uh, the vendor is Pernard. Pernard um, sat down with uh, myself and then I passed it on to Chief Sawyer who agreed that we could move the trash trucks so, um, west of Sabos. So the first trash truck would be sitting in front of a parking area which we have gotten permission to use uh, s west of Sabos um, store. So we no longer had a trash truck uh, in front of Sabos. We then moved the second trash truck further down on the uh, south side of C Street um, at the what we call the CD parking lot. We also got Pernod to agree that at the end of each night the seafood at the end of each night of the seafood festival uh, we would move those trucks so that there wouldn't be any overnight trash trucks on C Street, and we found remote locations for those trucks each night. Hmm. Um, so that was the arrangement that we made, um, and we worked very hard. Um, I was uh, uh, there, as you know, uh, the whole seafood festival, making sure that the position of the trash trucks uh, were uh, west of uh, Sabos uh, on C Street was not uh, interrupting any business um, uh, during the seafood festival mm. and um, I also went as far as offering them a free booth mm. at the seafood festival uh, in consideration uh, of their concern. So is that what's going to happen this year? So this year, I, I did go to um, the new owners uh, just last week, and I asked uh, to speak with the owner, and I have a phone call. Um, uh, I'm waiting for him to call me back. Um, I, I was told that the town had already made a decision uh, not to have any trash trucks uh, on C Street. Um, which was surprising to me, but I figured that, well, we would have that discussion um, at the operational information uh, session that we would have with the Board of Selectmen in August. 
Um, uh, let me once again emphasize that tonight's um, permit application is one that is important and as the town manager indicated uh, without these permits we will not have a seafood festival mm -hmm. i think too that if anybody out there like the people that own that restaurant and any other restaurants that are on the street they need to put it in writing and send it to the board of selectmen if they have a complaint so that we know um, we just can't have people just complaining for, to other people and this and that. I mean, it means nothing to me as yeah. another member of this board. I want to see the people complain. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a complaint, then there's nothing we can do for them. Mm -hmm. But people need to complain. Yeah. Right. And, and Mr. Chairman, let me just assure you that, and, and I know we had a difficult time with Sabos. We did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we tried hard. Um, keeping in mind there are eight businesses on that street, uh, no other business complained with the layout of where our operational trucks uh, were positioned. And that included a hotel, a restaurant, uh, two hotels, and a restaurant, and a candy store. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I know that I was one of the people that complained for Sabos last year yeah, because I the remember. people were irate. Um, and uh, so whatever. But it's, do you want to ask any more questions? Or? No, I appreciate for the clarification, and I yeah. was planning on having them come in, but I saw this on the consent agenda, and I wanted to make sure that we mm -hmm. were still going to have our regular scheduled appointment before I approved yeah. anything for and, it. And, you know, I think, too, if they want to go, like we tell people here, if you have a complaint and it's with the police department, go to the police department. If it's a complaint with the fire department, go to the mm -hmm. fire department. If they don't solve it, then you go to Fred. Mm -hmm. And then if Fred can't solve it, then it comes to the Board of Selectmen. It's pretty much the same way. If people have uh, are being affected by the Seafood Festival, I think they should go to the organizers of the Seafood Festival, give them a chance to correct it. Mm -hmm. And if it can't be corrected, then they need to come Yep. to Fred right. or to send a complaint in that can be distributed to all of the people here at the table and we all know about it and we all can work together with you and try to solve it and just just to clarify mr. chairman uh, just for the uh, for the record um, we did take the initiative uh, last week I drove down uh, to Sabos mm -hmm. and I spoke with the I believe the manager of Sabos not the owner um, and I made it very clear that I would very much like to speak with Lenny who is one of the owners, uh, so that we could discuss the Seafood Festival and uh, what we have been doing in the past. So, um, as I said, I have not heard back from him yet, uh, and I'm much, uh, I'm very, very willing to sit down with him, uh, share with him how we were able to handle everything last year, uh, and go from there. Okay, great. Thank you for coming and addressing yeah. these uh, issues. Okay. Now, can I assume that you'll have a vote tonight on that permit we'll take that up now yeah we're gonna um mary i'll did you want to make the motion or regina well, want to make it or i'll make it. i'll make the motion okay I'll would you what, can we have the how are we phrasing the motion did you want to what um, what is the motion going to say i'll make a motion that we approve the seafood festival permit for it september 6th through september 8th 2019. okay and I seconded it. All those in favor? Uh, three, one not here tonight, and one abstention. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And now we have the town manager's report. Mr. Welch. <laughs> Start this around so we can have paper circulating. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services has released a reduced schedule of PFOs permitted within water and wastewater systems. The regulations appear to require the town to test the outfall discharge point at the wastewater treatment plant for compliance with the regulations. That may also extend to the solid waste removed by the plant. There may, there are also, we are also currently in a closed landfill. These new regulatory costs will be included in the 2020 town budget together with any other associated costs for the new regulations. We are currently exploring this area to better understand the coming expenses. I've directed town council to determine the correct procedure to account for the contractual increases in long-term contracts held by the town for services by outside vendors. 
it appears that a separate warrant article may be required for each long-term contract to appropriate funds to pay f for the contractual services. The legislature did not pass the requested correction to previously passed legislation. The legal answer to the question could require a very extensive increase in the size of the annual town meeting warrant. I'll report back as soon as we have a firm conclusion to present to the board answering the, these questions. Wow. The fire chief reports that the turnout gear for our firefighters has been received. Our firefighters will therefore have two complete sets of turnout gear that is good for a 10-year period. This completes the requirements of the 2019 annual town meeting vote by the town. That's it, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions um, on the town manager's, manager's report, Mrs. Wolseley? I just have one, uh, Fred. I sent you an email, I believe, um, asking to have this on today's uh, agenda. The manager's report right now. Well, I know, I but I asked. Well, I think it's it's something that I need to understand. Well, we have old business coming up next. All right. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Regina? Yeah, I have several questions on the town manager's report. Move it up. Um, in reference to number one, I want to read a uh, email from Mike Carl after he attended the same seminar workshop I attended the NHMA on Monday the 22nd. I had asked for uh, this to be on an upcoming agenda. I've gotten no response. Um, this is from Mike Carl, one of the chief operators of the wastewater treatment plant here in Hampton. As far as the treatment plant goes, sludge disposal may become an issue, especially when our contract with waste management expires. They have been taking a wait and see approach. Officially, they haven't been worried, but at the same time, won't touch soil from peas or screenings from Merrimack compost with a 10 foot pole. There will be surface quality limits that we will have to plan for, but could probably put them in phase two of the upgrades. Science and technology will have to be directly <coughs> to the laws. Anything we design now for the treatment plant will probably be out to date in a year. Yeah. So I really think this is going to affect our wastewater treatment plant upgrade, and I think that probably we should talk about it so that we can let the public know what's going on at some point. Um, as far as the contracts, I wonder about how much are we talking about, how many of them are. Um, those related with Warren articles, did the articles speak to the increase? If not, should they have not required a two-thirds two passing vote as opposed to the normal better than 50%? Um, I would like to ask that perhaps town council can incorporate these questions into his review process. And I know the MRI appointment has been rescheduled. But at some point, could we discuss why the signage of the contract was delayed? Was that on the town or on MRI? And as far as the uh, fire department, I know they did an excellent job on Saturday. They always do. I actually talked with one of the firefighters right before the meeting that was down there that day. And um, But the problem is, what happened was we had the ambulance couldn't get down to the beach because of traffic. Nothing you can do about that. And we had our water rescue guys out in Rye. I spoke with some of the residents that, no, they haven't filed a formal complaint yet because they want to get together and they want to probably come into our next board meeting. So I don't have anything in writing. But I talked to them directly, and that's who I represent. And um, she was there with her, grand her grandchildren that day. And she said, the fire department, they originally only showed up with two guys with engine one. Mm. They didn't have any ambulance. And they didn't have their normal guys because they were out doing mutual aid. So I know our fire department and all our departments do the best with what they got. But what I think people don't realize is that our staffing levels mm -hmm. are for our residents. And they don't incorporate all these influxes we have on a Saturday 90 degree day yeah. with all these tens of thousands of people here. That guess what? We are now responsible for police, fire, public works. So as far as the situation, and I'm glad we still have some of our legislators here. I don't know, maybe at some point in the future we can talk about having the department heads almost compare what they need for mm -hmm. the regular 15, 16, 17,000 people that we have yeah. compared to what they need when they have to deal with the influx. Yeah. Because that's really what it's all coming down to. I mean, we have great guys, but it's like the police too. You, people can say whatever they want, but we don't have the same amount of police that we used to. And yeah. we still have all the people coming. Yeah. 
So I'm sorry, but I'm down, you know, it's, and we had someone on Mill Road that said the same thing. And it's not the department's fault. It's no reflection on the department. It's that we don't get any help ever, never. And it really, it's got to come to an end because it's dying. It affects our three major departments and I'm probably sure it affects all of them, but I'm glad the legislators are here tonight. And uh, like I said, our departments do a great job, but they need some help once in a while when we have all these people here. Um, Rusty. I'm all set on his report. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Welch, now with um, the, the, you know, the new uh, rules with the PFOs and the different responses that have happened, mm -hmm. how long is it going to be before we even know what we have to do in mm -hmm. our own um, department? No, the state doesn't know yet, so they're going to have to answer the question for us. They're still so, going through the process of formulating regulations and formulating instructions and so on and so forth. Uh, our concern is that uh, at least in one case, we're already over the regulatory limit. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we're going to have to build a treatment plant for the material that comes out of the wastewater treatment plant at some point in the future and, and when and where and how much and so on and so forth? I mean. We had uh, a meeting with uh, the water company uh, who, who have the same problem, and all of our PFOs are coming from them uh, because it's going to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, they had a proposal in here, as I recall, at one point in time for a treatment plant that represented four to five million dollars. Mm -hmm. If we have to treat everything coming out of the wastewater treatment plant, is it, is it four or five million dollars to build a treatment plant to treat that material? to take all the PFOs out of it, and then what do you do with them when you take it out? How do you get rid of them because they're now environmental hazards? Um, and then what do you do with a sludge? Uh, is the sludge going to be regulated? We don't know that. Uh, so there are a lot of questions that need to be answered, and I just want to let people know that we're in the process of trying to find answers to all those things. But they're probably going to have, they could have, I won't say they probably, they could have a severe financial impact on the town at some point in the future. We just don't know how much or when. But it's not this town, it's every single town in New Hampshire, isn't it? Well, it's every single town that has a wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. Yeah. And that is not the majority of towns in New Hampshire. Most people have in New Hampshire have uh, private wells. Mm -hmm. So they have to watch out for themselves. In this case, we have a public water supply. <laughs> Water supply has PFOs of various types mm -hmm. in it, and uh, when they are used in individual appliances in your home or your business, they end up going down through the public drain of the sewer and at the wastewater treatment plant. And if it contaminates the plant, then we have to clean the plant. So there are a number of factors involved here, and the water company has the same problem as we do. Uh, so it's it's something that we don't know the answer to. And we need to know the game rules before we can plan for mm -hmm. them. We actually need to know the rules, and we, the rules aren't all set yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but they're coming. Yeah, well, they're we looking at September 30th or October 1st. They haven't made a final decision yet. Uh, it will be so implemented the fourth quarter or the first quarter of next year. Well, we'll need to know exactly what we need to plan for before we can plan for We'll it. have to have costs determined before the end of the year in order to put them in the budget. Uh -huh. And I just would uh, like to um, bring out that um, we had a lot of people here that were very happy with the response um, from the fire department. And I've heard that from many people that they were happy with the response. Um, and um, it's, you know, the fact that the boat I assume it was the boat that was in Rye? Yes. Yeah, the, this, you know, that's one reason why we had so many people come to help us, because we help them all the time. This is a very long um, relationship that we've had with all of the communities, and all of the communities don't have what we have to share with them. So they're more than happy to help us on a regular basis, and we're happy to help them. And we all have to work together. This is an area where, uh, uh, you know, so it's a shame they couldn't think of a better way to uh, share some of these massive expenses, but it makes it very difficult. But Hampton's very well equipped 
uh, compared to many other towns, and we're able to share all these things. So I feel that we get a good uh, benefit from um, being able to depend on these towns, and they are able to depend on us. And it's the same way with the ambulance service. And uh, I think, you know, before we can uh, look at any complaints, we need to uh, hear what the chief has to say. Um, I guess people, the newspaper called me today that he put a blog on Facebook. I mean, is that the way that he answers to all the public on a regular basis, Mr. Welch? I don't believe so, sir. Yeah. So I don't really know. Too, many people think Facebook is the, sew, the uh, sewer of the Internet. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why we should be necessarily all, you know, <laughs> I personally don't give it a lot of uh, faith. I think there's a lot of fake news on um, Facebook, fake and I don't news. think that we should be planning on running our town government on Facebook. Right. So moving on to old business. I'll wait to uh, Number one, RSA 674 semicolon 41 IC 19 Park Avenue Garage. Mr. Welch? I refer.
Representative of our town council, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, something that's very rarely seen here because we do not have too many Class yeah. 6 highways. Uh, whenever someone wants to access uh, their property from a Class 6 highway and wants to build a structure on their property, they are supposed to ask the selectmen for a permission for the building permit to be issued. And what happens if the selectmen do give that permission, uh, because a Class 6 highway is one that we cannot spend money to maintain, mm -hmm. uh, is that a document is generated that the town and the uh, property owner sign, which is recorded at the Registry of Deeds, in which it's explicitly stated that the municipality neither assumes responsibility for maintenance of the road or liability for any damages resulting from the use of the road. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this particular instance has to do with a uh, property at 19 Park Avenue that is accessed over what's called Old Park Avenue. Uh, used to reach from Park Avenue to uh, Route 1, mm -hmm. but at one time then was, was cut off. And eventually, uh, through a town meeting warrant article, a portion of that was sold by the town, was discontinued and sold by the town to the budding, uh, budding properties. Mm -hmm. They didn't, then did a lot line adjustment so that the 19 Park Avenue property owned both sides of that little chunk. Uh, it's only 97 feet from Park Avenue, so it's not a very, at, at the longest, so it's not very far from that. And a building permit was also already issued for a garage that's been built in 2016. So this is basically a um, housekeeping cleanup effort as far as this particular uh, item goes. Um, a, a, a form has been generated to effectuate that recording which recites the fact of non-liability and also indicates that if, uh, if work is to be done in the future that uh, a, a permit will have to be sought from the town if work was to be done to maintain that little section of Class 6 road. Mm -hmm. Because we can't do it, but the, if permission were given by the board, as would the case with any town road, then that, uh, then that would have to be um, addressed at that time. Wow. So. Uh, that's the background to this particular one. There is another instance that's not before you tonight of another instance of a Class 6 road, but this is the facts on this one. Hmm. And so I've uh, prepared a motion if, you, if someone wishes to make it. The motion is I hereby <coughs> to authorize the issuance of the building permit for the new garage at 19 Park Avenue to be assessed, accessed from Old Park Avenue, a non-maintained Class 6 highway, provided that the owner sign the form approved by the town attorney entitled Notice of Limits of Municipal Responsibility and Liability per RSA 674 semicolon 41 I small c and pay the cost to the town to record same at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds with the board to sign same also. Mm. So moved. Second. All, any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, and one um, extent exception. Um, one not here tonight. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, Yes. So, uh, any old business? Mary Louise? Yes. Um, I, I received a notice in the desk now section of the computer, which is our selectman, our board of selectmen uh, town computer, right? I don't know what you're talking about, so. You don't, you don't go on to desk now to com communicate with the board? That's how I get my I go to my email. email. Yeah. All right, I go to the town email. Well, that's what it is, the desk now site. Now, I got a notice uh, early, I think it was Saturday morning, whenever it was, the fire, 
and it was aware that there was a working fire. But I never received any notice after that. Now, what I have known in the past, especially uh, Deputy Chief Hobbs in the police department, will get right back as soon as the condition is, uh, the situation is under control, uh, he sends a message that says, uh, you know, it's uh, all set and taken care of and whatever. I never received anything. Regina managed to find the report uh, on the uh, fire, and she emailed that to me uh, around 1 o'clock today. Uh, she shouldn't have to do that, and why are we not automatically getting a follow-up report? I have never had a problem before. I've never seen a time since I've been back on the board that I didn't get a follow-up from whatever department it was. So I, I don't know. Now, this is this uh, email is from Chief Ayotte. Well, the that way was, that, that I've always seen it through the years um, is that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Welch, but the way they used to do it, whether it was an unattended death or a fire, they either put notified one or two people. That's the way how it wasn't always the whole entire board, or they called you on the phone, one or two people. That's the way it used to be. Well, since um, I've been back and I'm on not the sure about that follow-up. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but I don't think it's uh, ever a distinct thing. I mean, this is a pretty serious when fire, I, and I, I have... It. But since I've been back on the board, when I've seen I it, they've, they've notified of working fires, yeah. and then if it went to a second, a third, a fourth alarm, they've done that. But yeah. this only went to a working fire. Yeah. So. Well, I've ne I have. It's been, always it's pretty had much inconsistent. I've always had a follow up on that. And the other thing that I had under old business, uh, I did uh, send Fred an email asking him to put this on the agenda, but it didn't make it. Um, I said, please include on our July agenda an item with printed documentation showing the requirement that an employee who is promoted to fill the job of his or her supervisor will automatically be granted the former supervisor's pay. This request was triggered by the $20,000 annual... We have, you're, we're going to be discussing this at the um, meeting that's being set up with a, uh, uh, an attorney. It would have been brought up. It was scheduled for today. Then it was scheduled for this next Thursday and it appears right now it's going to be next Monday but these are things that have to do with uh, specific people you shouldn't be mentioning them here and we are going to be meeting with an attorney that is coming actually from the insurance company to make sure that the, everyone's protected the way they should be so we will be meeting with an attorney okay but just what I'm trying to get at here is that at the in my That's why it's not on the agenda in my mind that every, at the beginning of every new uh, board year, uh, uh, the, uh, I would hope that Fred would tell us, uh, for example, in a situation like this, where a long-term employee retired and the secondary employee was promoted into that position, I, I wish someone had said at that point in time, because we were asked to approve the promotion. I wish someone had said this means be, and I don't know what Fred was referring to uh, about the a new, the newly appointed person automatically stepping in at that higher level. Okay, Fred, would she mentioned your name? Would you like to address this? First of all, the board can't approve promotions. It's in violation of RSA 37 colon 6 of the statutes. And that's what the Only lawyer is going to be talking about. employees by law. Oh, okay. Okay, and, and this employee was hired at the starting rate yeah. for that position in the study the board had, had put forward and approved. Oh, okay. It was, he was not hired at the rate of the previous employee. Well, I was not aware his, that his there. position as second in the department was more than twenty thousand dollars under the previous employee employer who was in the department. So I just reason, wasn't aware for yeah. that there that there are levels that are preset for, for some well, of these positions. The board approved that. Uh, well, and, I just in the in the survey or the 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 plan that you approved from that MRI did for the town. Oh, okay, MRI. that controls what I do. 
unless the board decides to relieve me of that, that responsibility. So this is something that's going to be do. talked about at this private meeting we're having with council. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Well, I appreciate that, but I just yeah. feel that I Well, that's why we're going to be meeting with the lawyer. We would have already have done it if it, the lawyer was available, but the lawyer's not available. That's okay. why it wasn't done before this meeting tonight. Well, this nice lawyer questions? is available. No, he isn't. Not for this. <laughs> Did you have any other questions? <laughs> no, thank you. Regina. <laughs> yes, um, as far as the fire on Dover Ave, I was not talking about mutual aid. I think mutual aid's great. I think if everything was set up like fire department mutual aid, we'd be running things a lot better. Um, what I was trying to explain is that this lady that I spoke with, a resident on Dover Ave, was not complaining either about the fire department. She was, mo she was relaying a concern about how, at the beginning, only two of our Hampton firefighters showed up, mm. and that actually visitors on the beach who were firemen came over to assist them. Okay, we don't really know about this. I think we need to have the I police do. chief here. Do you know this I to do. be right? Those are the only two employees that were available right. to go to the fire because everybody else was out on a fire right. call. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my point is, no, and that's fine. That's what, that is the way it's set up and I have no right. problem with mutual aid. I have a problem with not getting support from the state for any of our departments ever. That's what my problem is. The other thing I have for old business is uh, the private. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I apologize for getting it. We keep on hearing about the state and no. the legislators. Are because, some point I'd like to say yeah, that. we'll we'll think we'll find a way to slide you in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. So the um, we had talked about this before, and I think Rusty even brought it up too. I brought it up, and so did Rusty. There's a private beach sign on Harbor Road that's still there. I mean, I know Public Works is out, but just to let the public know that that's not a private beach. Uh, 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 let's right. not make predictions now that we don't, in fact, have facts on, because part of that property is a private beach, and part of it's a public beach. Um, well, the access for that the walkway. access for that walkway is on private property. Hmm. Oh, I thought that was supposed to be the no, access for... the access starts at where that's, that walkway starts, and it goes to the right. Oh where the public property is, and this walkway goes straight ahead, and that's where the private So we have private beaches in New Hampshire? We do, by order of the federal government. Oh, okay. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, parking issues. Um, I guess there was six Canadians parked down at the uh, Hampton Municipal lot on Saturday, and residents, it's on Facebook, if you don't believe it, which... Ooh, that's why yeah. people don't believe it when it's on Facebook. Many people don't uh, don't buy into Facebook. I hate to. Do okay, that well, uh, yeah, well, I, I never, I don't ever go for it. If I feed to Facebook, I figure it's probably fake news. Okay, well, I don't, I don't think so. So, um, or Twitter. And I talked to actually one of the parking enforcement officers and said he was the only one on Saturday, and he tried to get them all. But again. This is affecting residents. They should be able to go down to that beach. That actually, that there's a resident lot down at the end of High Street that is completely dedicated for residents. And I don't even see why, if you don't have a residence sticker, why you should be, even be able to drive in there. So the other parking lot, my idea, I've been thinking of, and I know that no one wants to uh, do it, but I think we should allocate 50 spots in the island path lot down on the beach, dedicated to residents, because I understand the precinct does all the fun stuff, the fireworks, the shows every night. That's all Hampton Beach Village District pays for all that. The nifty night I had paid for by the Village District, the expenses that I had, most of it. But the maintenance, the infrastructure, it's the town of Hampton. It's every single town of Hampton resident that pays for that. Public works, fire, police. It's not just the Village District. So the beach town, the town of Hampton, is the town, and the village district is the beach. It's all one, but without the other, the other one wouldn't exist. So that's, that's what uh, I want to make that clear. Um, also, I'm told, now I have not looked at this myself because I don't want the app on my phone, but apparently there's an app that is routing visitors to the beach down Wanakunit Road. Um, I've talked to several residents, and I'll try to get them to come in, but they reach out to me when I walk by, when I drive by, mm -hmm. and when they wave me over, guess what? I pull over and I talk to them. Yeah. This happened on Saturday evening, so you know what? I just took the comment, and I figured I'd bring it up. I'm a selectman. I represent the people, so I bring it up. 
And um, there's more cars down there than ever. There's speeding, speeding our issues. And we don't have, there's no police there because the police, I guess what? They got to be down the beach. Um, so we don't have any speed warning signs on Wanakunin either, which has been a issue for a while. So again, we're going to route traffic through town to get to the beach. Wanakunin, that's supposed to be the way that we go down to the beach, the people that live here. Now it's advertised that that's another way to get to the beach. So that's another way that there's traffic getting backed up. Okay, so if this reroute didn't take into consideration, again, the residents that live here year-round and pay for everything year-round. That's all I have. Yeah. Um, I would say that uh, the people, the, the state did listen. The Hampton Beach Area Commission ran this, uh, uh, I think everyone realizes now, that we worked for three years on to do what these people talked about here tonight. And because there was so much feedback by the public, the whole plan was scrapped. And I'll tell you, I worked on this plan for the three years. And uh, our number one source of finding out what the public wanted uh, at these meetings by we paid a consultant, uh, I don't know, I think it was around $300,000 maybe, or maybe that's for the plan. I forget how much we paid the consultant that managed it, the whole uh, project, you know, what we were gonna do, the possibilities, this and that. And guess where we got all of our information, where we got this horrible plan uh, that had to, we had to uh, get all the taxpayers out and coming to the meetings to the point we had 145 people. The, during that three-year period, we were inviting input uh, to decide what the plan would be. We got it from Facebook. Uh, all advertising was done on Facebook. They were taking information from people from Facebook, and the, the feeling was, well, everybody comes to Hampton Beach, and it is a state park, and we're going to listen to all this feedback. Oh. Feedback, And that whole plan was basically made because of the input they got back from oh Facebook. God. I knew it wasn't right from the beginning that I was there. I complained about it, complained about it, and complained about it. And I'm the one that made sure, with help from Nancy Stiles, that there was 145 people showed up at that meeting to change it. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the biggest thing where I've seen the public get together and do something. So I tell people all the time, if you're not happy, you have to complain. But you have to complain. Because it didn't do me any good to complain about it. Until those 145 people came, did that plan change. And it was done, Nancy Stiles did a wonderful job getting out there and pushing the members of the board, me being one of them, um, that we all work together. A lot of people that are on the board were very unhappy. They didn't want, they wanted the first plan, but they did listen to the public. And that's a, a glorious thing that to see how the public can be uh, so important and can change things. And I think that's what these people were doing here tonight. They were, uh, that, that guy, he seems like a great guy. I don't think I've seen him except maybe once or twice. He seems very, uh, he wants to hear from people. So I hope people do go on to their site and take a look at these plans and see what can be done. The reason we're having problems with, uh, you know, yeah, we'd like more firemen, but I think it's important to remember that the voters voted against it. And that's why, uh, you know, we're going to have to think, we're going to have to think creatively of what's going to happen in the future. We're going to have to listen to the fire chief, and hopefully we won't be listening to Facebook. Uh, but we need to have the fire chief come in and uh, give us his, so I don't know if we'll be able to have him. Uh, he's due for reports. So. He's due, so it's, we'll have him. Ordinarily, uh,
when there's a big fire, although I don't think this qualifies as necessarily a big fire by other standards like what we've had in the past uh, or a big event, we always have the firemen, the fire chief here. The reason the fire chief's not here tonight is we didn't know how long it was going to take with the state. We wanted to give them uh, all the time they needed to talk with us. And uh, that's why MRI is not here this evening that's either. Right. I wish we could have had the lawyer so that Mrs. Wolseley's questions would have been answered. We did try. I spent a lot of time um, dealing with Mr. Gerald here. Uh, and he's made every effort, but uh, so you know we're doing all that we can to uh, to make things happen here. Rusty, did you want to say something? Yeah, a couple of things. One is the uh, the Hampton Fire Department does not have a Facebook page. The Hampton Firefighters have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. It's oh. not a town sponsored page. Right. Yeah. yeah. Second of all, uh, when you're talking about apps on phones and. Uh, Magellan or Google Maps or stuff like that, they're all private companies. We've had the same problem out on, on Mary Bachelor Road by the trucks being sent out that way on, on private roads. Yeah. And we've tried to get a hold of them and tell them that, you know, they're sending them out Liberty Lane. Liberty Lane is not even a, it's a private road. Yeah, there's some things we have no control over. So there's some things we have no control over. Yeah. So as much as people want to complain about it, that, that it's okay to complain, but we don't have any control over that type of stuff. So, um, That's a good point. And I think the police have, especially out there on Drakeside Road, I believe they did uh, make an effort to connect. They have made an effort, and I'm sure they're making an effort. You know, yeah. uh, there are there are apps out there that do that give you suggestions to go other places when, when traffic is backed up. Uh, that happens. Okay. It, it happens in the summer when we're busy. It happens all over the country because they, they, they do it all over the country. Mm -hmm. Well, so. good. So under uh, continuing with old business, why don't we bring uh, Ms., uh, Representative Edgar up here. He wasn't able to come here for when we had our other meeting, so we give him a few minutes to see what he can do for us. Oh. Tell us what you'd like to address. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Chairman. Um, what I want to mention right now was relative to some comments that were made as far as the state doing something to try to be able to support the town down at the, you know, down at the beach more in particular. Um, many members of the town here, the town attorney, the town uh, manager, uh, worked really hard uh, with me on a particular bill to try to get some money to the, to the town to uh, basically to charge individuals who are coming to the hotels and such basically out of town people you know a couple uh, extra bucks a night uh, it was a fee it was going to go back into the a uh, some type of a fund and one of the things that was mentioned just as a discussion of course I have to be approved by you all was to possibly to fund uh, a fireman down at the beach uh, in the summer that would in a sense the occupant the people who would be paying the uh, the occupancy fee uh, fee again not a tax would uh, we be getting some type of a benefit from it and it would actually help the town a little bit because we have these situations that we just mentioned where there is possibly uh, shortfalls in some areas especially with the way the the budget has uh, you know not been getting approved uh, the way we would like it to over the last couple of, of, uh, of periods so um, I want to mention that there was efforts this way and I just want to say that if it's tried again that I would appreciate the support of the town again the town was uh, very supportive of it, but maybe even go a little bit further um, and put a little pressure on some of the other individuals who keep calling it a tax, and then they can't have a tax, mm -hmm. uh, even though you do need uh, to get some type of service. And this was a fee, and I would hope that we would get support again, and by all the individuals that say that they think they have a problem with it. So um, if there any questions for me on that, or... That's basically all I wanted to say right now in response to uh, Mrs. Wolsey. some comments. Just a couple of quick uh, points, and thank you for being here. Um, there is a state uh, bridge study going on, and apparently during, at the time of this Dover Avenue fire, uh, there was a great deal of difficulty with some firefighters getting back into town and into the beach area because of that bridge. Now, I serve on that bridge committee, and the committee's done a pretty good job, but I want to know 
that that bridge is a terrible hazard. That old bridge over the Taylor River is a dreadful hazard. Why is the state dragging its feet? And they're talking in terms of 2023 or 2024. That's a terrible hazard, especially for emergency personnel. If there's any way you can wake people up up there uh, in Concord, I don't know why it takes them so long to replace what's obviously a faulty bridge. Of course, if you look at the uh, number of at-risk bridges in the state, it's pretty scary. It sure is. And the and number two, um, I I would like to see where you know when Regina brings in a lot of comments on the beach and all this stuff. Why will the state legislature not? put the state parks budget in the state operating budget. Why is that a standalone uh, source of funding? And I could never figure out why. Why is that not part of the entire state budget? All the state parks in the whole state of New Hampshire, just put them in a whole, their own section in, in the operating budget. What's this self-funding <coughs> nonsense? And we've got all these messes at the beach, and we've got all, and probably we have the most uh, challenge of any state park in the state of New Hampshire. But I, I, it, it puzzles me why the state of New Hampshire refuses, or the legislature in the state of New Hampshire has refused to put the state parks in the operating budget. So if you. Send my plea okay, to your colleagues answer. up there. Um, the, uh, Stupid way to fund the thing. Fish and Game is, is another department, which also is basically self-funding. Yep. Uh, the state of New Hampshire has decided uh, over many, many, many years to do it this way in order to keep taxes down. They don't have to raise as much money. Um, and dump on the towns where the parks yeah. live, especially Hampton. That's why you live free and die. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, if you want to make me emperor for a day, I can make a lot of changes. That would be good. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that, that's not going to happen. You'd be good at um, that, Mike. I, well, thank you. I, I think I would, too. <laughs> um, but, again, uh, many people uh, here have been in the legislature. They know how it runs. They know what it takes to get something done. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if people would really like to, uh, to push... Uh, for uh, some of the uh, mechanisms that would, it would take to to fund items such as this, uh, I'd be glad to join them. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I'm in favor of, of a lot of things, but uh, and, and I'll continue to push for many things. But um, that that is something that, that I think overall, if the funding was there, when you look at a massive budget that we have um, and the stuff that's not funded, including the bridges. Uh, in the roads, mm. um, and it takes years to, to get yeah. a project like the one they were associated with. Uh, and I just, uh, right at this point, the way things are going, and with the funding, I, I hope we can get it by 23. Yeah, well, I'll be lucky to see it before we die. That's how I feel. Wow. And I won't be surprised if we don't. Really? But thank you very much for commenting. We appreciate it. Oh, Do you have a question? Yeah, thanks, Mike, and uh, I appreciate what you guys do, and I do realize that there's four and a half of you going up against 400, <laughs> and whatever you bring forth for <laughs> Hampton, it, it's pretty tough to sell. Um, but I think what a lot of people need to realize is that state parks, I agree 1,000% with Mary Louise, state parks operating budget is a joke. They transfer 1.5 million out every single year and they give us no support, not just in fire, but police and public works. There, Rye and Northampton and all those other towns that we do mutual aid for, we do mutual aid for them all year round, usually without any issue. But in the summer, yeah. we have tens of thousands of people that go to that beach and we have no, well you know, there's barely any infrastructure investment. We don't have any, we barely have any here, and it's like that statewide, and no one wants to look at it. I don't know why. But these are real costs, and these are real problems that we're going to have going into the future. And people like me and people younger than me are very concerned about it. My information comes from talking to constituents. 
which is who I represent in this town. Sometimes I can get them to come in. A lot of times they don't want to come in. They want to tell me. And that's just the way it is, and I'm sorry. But um, it's factual. It's not off Facebook. It's off of people I talk to, people that call me on the phone, and people that send me emails. And then when I see people blasting about stuff on the same, the same things on Facebook, lots of them who are longtime residents, I'm pretty sure they're not lying and they're not bashing their town for no reason. So these are concerns that have to get addressed. And I appreciate what you, Representative Edgar, yeah. and all the legislators do. But no one's addressing them, including this board. And no one's fighting for the Hampton taxpayer. And that's what I'm here for. I'm not, for, I'm not here for the town of Hampton. I'm not here for no. the legislators. Okay. I'm here for the taxpayer. I'm going to bring yours up right now. Okay. Yeah. And I would like to say uh, that um, we, uh, if the people don't come and complain, then it doesn't then come. You're, Regina, you're one person. One selectman has, yeah, bring has it to the no board. authority. Three selectmen do. So if your people that are complaining to you want their issues solved, they need to bring it to this board. They need to give it to Mr. Welch. Then when Mrs. Wolseley says that she's not, um, doesn't know what's, uh, she hasn't been given the information, once the people complain and give it to Fred, he will disperse it to us all. We all have a chance to try to make something happen and solve these people's problem. I am not going to listen to any complaint if it's not made by a person uh, that is willing to at least come in and talk. I don't care if they mention their name, but they need to bring their complaint forward. Otherwise, it has very little validity to me. Did you want to say something before we move on? Could I just yeah, say yeah. something? Yeah. Oh, uh, I wanted to thank you, uh, Representative Edgar, and also Representative Laughlin and uh, Bushway for uh, testifying regarding the particular bill. All of them testified uh, regarding the bill that would have added that fee onto a uh, room rate uh, for certain uh, hotels. Uh, also, I wanted to thank you, Representative Edgar, for attempting to have the, uh, the Department, the uh, Department of Natural Resources, add a minimal amount to their parking charge, which would have been. Bushways, uh, thank you. Yes, I remember now. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, it, but that was a great attempt, and it would it would not have had uh, any adverse impact on that department whatsoever. Um, nevertheless, it was opposed and was defeated with their opposition. Mm -hmm. But it was a great effort to uh, yeah. to solve, in part, the, the problems that um, Regina has spoken to about lack of support for our uh, police, fire, and public works, the things that we have to do as an extra commitment mm -hmm. uh, to accommodate the state park and all of its demands. Well, thank you. I think the things that we want to watch out for is the downshifting, and some of that is a result of the way things are funded with the revenue. Yeah. So I'll say one, one more time. It's we have to look at people. Have to realize that you have to have the revenue to do the things you want. You just can't want the things. You got to be willing to pay for it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we do have under old business. Uh, there's a gentleman, um, Joe, that's sitting back there, that. Um, he has asked uh, for there to be a public hearing. Is it a public hearing? It will be a public hearing by the board. Yeah. Right. So, and will it be in two weeks? I can't answer that until I set it up and I get to, because the utility company has to be here too. Okay. So we are going to be having a, um, a, uh, a, um, a public hearing, it appears. Um, that's about something that uh, Unitel has put up on a poll. And um, oh, okay. they're going to be asked to reconsider. Uh, well, no, actually, they're not going to be asked to reconsider. Well, this yeah. board this has This board is to going to be asked to be reconsidered. We're, you know, we're going to talk about it. Uh, and people that live around there will be able to come in and yeah. um, comment at, during the public hearing. So as soon as it's set up, will uh, Joe out there uh, get a, a letter where he's the one that he signed? Will. He will because it's, he's one of, he, actually his wife is the petitioner yeah. because she owns the property. Yeah. Uh, but he'll receive a response and he'll receive a letter saying the hearing will be on such and such a date, such and such a time. Uh, just to explain to you what happens here, the statute provides that the selectmen have the final say in this. 
And if the selectmen decide after hearing all parties, including the utility <coughs> company, that this needs to be moved, you can so order and they have to do it. Mm -hmm. One reason why I have been concerned about this is after uh, t taking a look at some of the information that's come forward is uh, the, uh, the uh, Unitel has, or somebody that works for Unitel has offered, uh, said, well, we'll be glad to move it if you're willing, if they just put it up, but they're going to be willing to move it if he pays for it, which, you know, he didn't Not want what to, the statute says. Yeah. So we have, uh, you know, this is going to be an interesting, um, mm -hmm. it's not something we've done before that I can remember, at least in a while. No, I've uh, never seen one of these yeah, done before. But, but this is there. a good example about a person making a complaint and being able to do something about it. So okay. you'll be hearing from us, okay? Could I ask one question? Would it be PUC that would be here as well? The Public Utilities Commission has nothing to do with this. Absolutely zero. It's yeah. completely the Board of Selectmen. So we're still investigating. We're going to be at the next does it make any difference what the Public Utilities Commission wants? They have no authority in this area. It's only so, the selectmen. When we know more information, we'll be letting you know. Yeah. This is something unusual, like I explained to you. I, it's, I haven't seen a lot of something like this. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're going to carry on and try to uh, have this hearing, and we'll let you know what you need to do. Good. Okay? Thank um, you. Are we finishing um, up the agenda? Uh, we, yes. We're moving on to new business. And poor Jen sitting back there. I guess that's why she's here. Um, the oil. <coughs> she brought her tranquilizer with her to I make it through the night. I, I think her hair grew when she was I, back there. I, I will say, because scent agenda goes first, and that would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is about as simple as it gets. Uh, in January, this board usually takes a vote uh, to allow us to apply to grants uh, for NHDES and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, we have come across an opportunity. It's called the Used Oil Collection Assistance Grant Application. Not only is it the application, uh, but as you go through this, it is um, a way of just receiving the grant money. The maximum request that can be made is for $2,500. The purpose of uh, the grant basically says the applicant collects or intends to collect do-it-yourself or used oil. <laughs> and or filters from residents who generate used oil as a household waste when they change their own automotive oil. Uh, the applicant is requesting grant funds related to their do-it-yourself or used oil collection center, so that being our transfer station. The idea here is that we take this $2,500, we'd like to purchase what they call an automotive filter crusher. Yeah. It basically gets all the oil out of it, a heavy-duty floor stand to make sure it's standing upright and safe. And then we become the recipients of the used oil, but we burn the oil for heat in the winter. Oh. So it's actually, not only does this grant allow us to make that purchase, but w the end product is something we reuse. So I'm here to ask the board to um, allow us to accept the grant money uh, upon a successful application to DES. Jen, just, just to be clear, this is a program that we already do but this is for some equipment to enhance our capability. Is that right? Uh, it's Yes. So we already collect the used motor oil, yes. Uh, I, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, make the recommendation to allow the Public Works Department to apply for and accept the used oil collection assistance grant and authorize the town manager as the grantee signor to enter into the grant agreement on behalf of the town of Hampton. Yeah, it would be apply for, accept, and expend. Apply for, accept, and expend. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Matt. Any further discussion? You know, like, two questions I had is one is it's chiefly motor oil, correct? Not correct. It's motor oil. Cooking oil. Correct. <laughs> motor oil. And you do already have a you. Uh, oil-fired furnace. Correct. Already have, already operational. Good. So that's yeah. good All those in favor? Four and one not here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry Thank that you, that Jim. happened. <laughs> no problem. Um, Bring a pillow the next And time. any other new business? I have new business. Regina? As a uh, resident said, a fairly large limb fell on my tree yesterday afternoon when I was driving on Mill Road. 
I've contacted my insurance company, so I'll be spending $500 on that deductible. Um, those dead trees are all over town. I emailed the town manager. We don't have money in the budget. Well, guess what? People are sick of hearing that. Um, being told that we have a default budget is no longer working. It's irritating the taxpayers even more, and it's going to get us another default budget.
in 2020. Um, outside council expense as of June is at 249.51, no reflection on town council, but I'm making that statement. We can spend money on lawyers, but we can't spend money in public works. Um, the rec department is giving donations out to the village district. How does that look to the public? It's time to work for the taxpayer or we're gonna have another default budget. And I agree again with Mary Louise Woolsey that the New Hampshire State Park should be in the state of New Hampshire operating budget. Um, also, as of June, we have, we're underexpended by 832,000. Last year at this time, we were underexpended by 776,000, and we know we had money left over at the end of the year. Um, also, town manager forwarded us some information that the wastewater state aid grant priority list, which shows Hampton is potentially receiving over $9.5 million toward wastewater projects is going to be for review, I think, a public hearing on August 1st. And they're taking comments and letters up until August 8th. So I was asking the board if we could authorize a town manager to write a letter to the Bureau showing the town of Hampton's support for this priority list. Mm. <coughs> Good idea, because the legislature's failed to fund it again. Yeah. Uh, I'll, sec I'll second Regina's motion. It's fine. All those in favor, it's four and one not here this evening. Um, so did you have to, do you have to pay a um, deductible once a tree falls on a car? Well, that's my deductible for, you know, non-fault accidents, yeah. whatever it's called. Because it's all, uh, you would think that with, you know, like if your windshield breaks, you don't have to pay the deductible. But, I mean, it's fine. I mean, nothing happened. I got some buffs on my car. But she the problem lucky. is, what if it yeah. was someone else in a smaller car or, yeah. you know, I mean, this is... <laughs> Yeah. Taking chances. Well, it's always it's always been a problem. There's never been enough money uh, around to go and do the job that needs to be done, even when there was money. Mm -hmm. uh, now there isn't money, mm -hmm. so this is something that we'll have to talk about. And when is um, Jen coming in with? Um, Be your next meeting. That uh, well, you mean uh, Christy? No. Uh, Finance director. No, the DPW. When are they coming in next? Uh, not for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, at some point, we need to, uh, you know, put this on the agenda and have them come in mm -hmm. and talk about it. They have a regular scheduled meeting coming up, yeah. and we'll have it for that meeting, probably okay. sometime the end of August. Okay, great. Mrs. Wolseley? And Mr. Chairman, are we going to address that non-union wage schedule at some point in time? You'll have that on the agenda. I mean, we've got the paperwork. So. Mm -hmm. I've asked for it to be on the agenda, so at, at some point it's going to... You voted to execute, execute that. Yeah. We've already executed Yeah, we've it. already executed it. So it was on the agenda. I don't remember. It was, it was, it was, three to no. vote. It was already done. Oh, all right. Well, um, I was going to say, I thought we, we tried. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we have now, are we having non-public for legal? Yes. I don't want to be here all night, frankly. Wow. It's only 10 minutes after 9. Yes. Yeah, but, um, Some of us are up at 5 o'clock. Yeah. 4.30 for me. 4 o'clock um, the Okay, so did you want to? Yeah, if there could be, a, Mr. Chairman, a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3, Roman 2, small c and small e. Second. I'll make the motion. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Roll, roll call. Uh, aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Channel 22. Everybody left.